In this video, I'm showing you how to get better first layer results with mesh bed leveling on the Ender 3, and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you might have seen that I did a bunch of videos about how to use bad leveling probes to improve printing the first layer. But on the end of three, I found that mesh bed leveling in fact really is giving me very consistent results. So I don't consider installing a probe on this printer at all. So what's the difference between normal bed leveling and mesh bed leveling? Normally you start to level your bed using a manual process to move the nozzle to the four corners of your print bed. And then you make sure that in all four corners, the pressure of the nozzle against the heat bed is the same. And because all corners are then perfectly leveled, this should mean that also in the center of the heat bed or any other given point, the pressure should be the same, right? Well, not so much because the heat bed might have a slight curve or your bump, however they might call this, and the center or any other point on the heat bed could have a different distance to the nozzle than it would have in one of the corners. At this point, normally you might say, okay, let's install a leveling probe to fix this. Well, this might be a solution, but I can tell you with mesh bed leveling, there is a solution that will cost you basically nothing and it will give you very consistent results for many, many prints before you maybe have to adjust the leveling once in a while. Mesh bed leveling makes you adjust the nozzle pressure versus the heat bed manual at nine different points instead of having an auto bed leveling probe doing this for you. The rest is technically the same as with the auto bed leveling probe. The firmware will calculate the perfect distance of the nozzle against the heat bed for every point in between the reference points of the mesh. And so it makes sure that there is always the same amount of pressure. To get this feature, you need to install the Marlin firmware on the Ender 3. That's my only prerequisite for you. If you've never done that before, please watch my in-depth guide about how to install the Marlin firmware on the Ender 3 and make sure that you have uploaded Marlin firmware in the default configuration. Now, why I'm saying this, why I'm stressing this so much is because I've seen many people trying to flash firmware to a 3D printer for the first time while enabling every single feature they want right from the start. Then what they run into is sort of a chain reaction of errors because there is several issues blocking them from either compiling or uploading the firmware and they really struggle to find the root cause and they don't know where to start. Instead, what you really should do is making sure that you can install Marlin in the default configuration version because what you will see is once we enable mesh bed leveling in the firmware configuration, we will run into an error compiling the firmware. The good is, because we know that everything worked fine before enabling that feature, we know where to look for the problem. So let's start enabling mesh bed leveling in the Marlin configuration file. The first configuration item you have to look for is around line 977 in configuration.h. Enable mesh bed leveling by removing the two leading slashes from this line. Next, we want to make sure to have the right menu item for bed leveling enabled. It's in line 1099 and called LCD bed leveling. And finally, we can enable another switch in line 983 called restore leveling after G28. I use this all the time because this will restore the mesh to be used every time a new print starts after G28 has been issued. Alternatively to switching is on, you can add the G code M420 blank S1 to your printer's list of start G codes in your slicer software, but I never saw why I would not want to use the mesh bed leveling every time I print something. So I always keep restore leveling after G28 on. I'm happy with that. Now, after changing all these settings, let's try to compile the firmware once. Hmm, it looks like having a weird error telling us region tags overflowed. Well, that means the firmware doesn't fit in the available flash memory on the printer's mainboard. What we need to do now is to disable some minor features of the firmware so it will fit in the given 128 kilobytes of memory available. The first thing I always disable is unnecessary logos and boot screens. Disabling line 77 and 78 containing string config age off and show boot screen by adding two forward slashes in front of each line. Let's compile again. Seems we are still missing around 1.2 kilobytes of memory. Now let's disable another feature in configuration underscore adv.h at line 798, which is called arc support. It 
It's not needed unless you require it explicitly in your slicer software. And I'm using Curera and I never needed this feature in the past. Now we should have enough free space to compile the firmware and upload it to the printer. Now, after uploading the firmware to your printer, you will find a new menu item in the prepare menu called bad leveling. Here you can tweak all settings around bad leveling. Before you start with the bad leveling, please heat up the nozzle and heat bed to your desired printing temperature. In my case, I like to print PLA at 50 degrees Celsius bed temperature and 210 degrees Celsius nozzle temperature. Wait a few minutes until the temperature has stabilized and then you can start with the bad leveling. Also make sure that you did your manual bad leveling before doing the mesh bad leveling. Why is that important? I mean, we have mesh bed leveling now, we can fix anything, right? The point is, if you do the manual bed leveling first and make sure that every corner of the heat bed has at least the same distance from the nozzle, even if there's not any pressure of the nozzle against the bed, it will make mesh bed leveling much easier and also you will not have a skewed surface. It's just the same concept as with using an auto bed leveling probe. You should have at least a somewhat leveled bed to start. Also make sure that your paper clips holding the surface sheet have enough distance from the corners so the printer can do the bad leveling without touching those clips. I keep them away 5 to 4 cm from the edges. Open the prepare menu, then select the bad leveling menu and then click on the level bad menu item. Your printer will start auto homing now. When the printer shows click to begin, Push the button and wait for the printer to move the nozzle to the lower left corner, which is the first corner in the process. Push the piece of paper in between the nozzle and the heat bed. Now, instead of using the heat bed adjustment knobs in a corner to adjust the distance, use the turnable knob of the controller and lower or raise the nozzle until you get the paper to rub against the nozzle and heat bed as much as you need it. I usually increase the pressure up to a point where I can barely push the paper without having to pull on the other side. You certainly will need to find the right amount of pressure in a few iterations and do some test prints after each calibration before you will know how much pressure is enough. To protect your print surface from getting damaged, always put the paper to the next calibration point and then push the button so when the nozzle moves to the next point, the paper is going to be already between nozzle and bed. Why is that somewhat important? So you can imagine if you started calibrating the previous point and that previous point was actually quite low, you would have brought the nozzle down to that point to touch the bed. And then let's imagine the next point, it could be a corner and it could be a little bit higher. And so what the printer then does, it moves over to the next point and then it comes down with the nozzle to the actual previous point's height. And that could mean that the nozzle would push hard down on that point and so because of that, and we don't want to destroy our heat bed, we will put the paper in between before the nozzle comes over to the next point. So finally, when you have done the calibration for the last corner, the printer is going to beep to tell you that it has saved your new mesh and you're now ready to start printing. One last thing that I can recommend, every time you finish a print, remove the surface sheet by taking the paper clips off and then take your part from the sheet. Even though you might be tempted to just pull apart from the sheet when it's still mounted to the printer. So why could this be better? I'd say every time you pull something off the printer when the, the sheet is still mounted, you're gonna move the heat bed, you're gonna pull, you're gonna push and it could be decalibrating basically over a period of time. And I found that I have very consistent results because I always remove the sheet from the printer. I'm basically avoiding to touch and move anything of the printer frame and then I think I have 10 prints now done with the same calibration. So I think that is really something you should try and that just saves you some time. Okay, if you think this video was helpful, like and subscribe and if you really want to support me creating this content for you, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It's linked in the description. See you next time. Have fun printing and keep it real.